Hello and welcome to Chesney's Let's Play Baldur's Gate. Uh, Baldur's Gate, an RPG based on Advanced Dungeons and Dragons world, uh, rules. Uh, it's possibly one of the best RPGs of all time, and uh, in my opinion, the best D&D based uh, game of all time. Um, we'll, I'll be doing a uh, uh, walk, uh, Let's Play on a version that was actually created by a group called the Gibberling 3. Uh, the Gibberling 3 took this, uh, took the entire Baldur's Gate series, Baldur's Gate 1, 2, Throne of Ball, and Tales of the Sword Coast, which I actually don't have the Tales of the Sword Coast in this one, but took all those games and combined them into one humongous continuous playthrough. And simply, that's just an amazing feat. It's free to download, it's very easy to set up, I'm not a computer whiz, and uh, it, I, I had it running in a half hour. So so, and I think that's just awesome, because, I mean, who doesn't want to walk through Candlekeep with, you know, a, bar a barbarian or something, or, you know, is it just as a level 30, you know, necromancer, I, well, they don't have necromancer, or, well, yeah, they do, the necromancer, specialist mage, but anyway, so, this will be a walkthrough of, uh, hopefully the entire thing, um, I keep calling it a walkthrough, it's a let's play. Uh, and it'll be taking a more objective, uh, ideological look at the game. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm not too much of a comedian to be honest. I'm more of a statistical guy. <laughs> if you want, uh, if you want some laughs, actually, check out Kikoskie's videos. That's uh, Kikoskie. He is an amazing uh, Let's Play artist. He actually inspired me to. Uh, start uh, doing Let's Plays, and uh, frankly, he's just hilarious. Uh, my favorite is uh, Let's Play Lands of Lore 2, uh, Lands of Lore being my uh, favorite game probably ever created. But anyway, I'm doing this on Boulder's Gate, um, so uh, I'll try not to talk too much uh, through the opening movie. We'll jump right in and then go to character creation. I think this is just a great line. He who fights m with monsters should look to it that he himself does not become a monster. When he gazes long into the abyss, the abyss also gazes into you. A perfect beginning to this game. Truly, I think that was just a uh, wonderful opening to the game. Uh, the guy in the uh, dark suit's name is Saravok. You'll be meeting more of him later. And uh, the guy who got killed, don't worry about him. He's not important. So I'll jump right into character creation. I actually considered not putting character creation into the game, but it's such a it's such a huge part of the game that I think uh, I think that you know yeah, that it, it should be included. Um, as you can see, there's Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 characters, even though, uh, we're playing the first one. You can play as a half-orc if you wanted to now. Uh, and basically, you know, male, female, race, class. I always play as a mage, that's what uh, I'll be going through as, and uh, typically I always play as a true neutral character, but this time I'll be running a chaotic neutral. Uh, after rereading the alignments, I think it fits me more. Now here, uh, here's probably the most time-consuming part, and I won't be spending um, a whole lot of time on this. But uh, to be honest, the name of the game is just to keep re-rolling uh, until you get base. Uh, 
perfect stats, I guess. I mean, um, there's a lot that goes into this. You just keep rerolling until that ability is up at the top there. You can get the highest number you can. Um, with the mage, you'll actually get a pretty high number uh, because they have the biggest variable uh, for stats since their only prerequisite is a 9 on intelligence. Um, and after, I'm getting considerably uh, lucky here. After I keep getting higher rolls each time. But uh, I think I'm going to stick with that 57 just for the video's purpose. Uh, but anyway, so basically what you want to do is when you're creating your character, you want to have each stat at least up to 8. Because 8 is about the point where, uh, where the penalties stop incurring. Because believe it or not, each and every stat point you put into your character does not does not matter. Sometimes it doesn't even have any effect on your character whatsoever, or an effect that that will not assist you. It's just there. It, it, it does nothing for you. So, anyway, playing as a mage, we're going to put uh, intelligence up to 18. And, uh, to be honest, I like to put dexterity up to 18, because when you go, when you start, when you hit 15, you get a negative 1. 16, negative 2, and so on. So at 18, you get a negative 4 on your armor class, which is just and, uh, it's necessary for mages. I mean, when you're not wearing any armor, you're just gonna die. Um, I'm not a big fan of constitution for mages. I mean, it's really handy when they have those extra few hit points, but uh, I, d I just don't think it helps you that much. Um, and something I actually want to say is, the constitution points between 8 and 13 actually don't do the main character much of any good because all they do is increase the chance of uh, successful resurrection. Basically, when you die, you know, you don't explode so your body can be re resurrected. But um, the main character, once the main character dies, the game ends completely. So, I mean, there's no point in even having between 8 and 13. You at least want to go up to 14, 15, 16, you know, 18. But, uh, being as a wizard, we're not going to do that. I like to put a few points in strengths just so I can carry some stuff. I like to crank out, uh, crank out, uh, wisdom, uh, so I can have resistance to spells. Charisma does have an effect on the game, but it only affects what NPCs, uh, have to say to you. Stuff like that. So, uh, we're pretty much going to gimp, uh, charisma. And, uh, probably I'll create another character before I start the actual Let's Play. So, uh, just to get a few more stat points in there, but, uh, we're gonna go with Sling, uh, just because the, you know, wizards using, uh, ranged weapons is just the most logical, you don't want to fight with a quarter staff. Now here's where it gets cool, because I can choose Find Familiar, uh, Spook, Phantom, uh, Reflected Image, uh, which is really cool, uh, because, you know, obviously Baldur's Gate 2 spells. Uh, we're gonna go with Sleep. Sleep, I think, is a very, very, uh, one of the most useful level 1 spells, uh, for a low-level mage, and then, of course, Magic Missile, Identify, and then, uh, something random here, uh, maybe I'll go with, what is this, oh, I can't pick that, must be a wild mage spell, uh, we'll go with Armor, uh, Appearance, Chesney's always been a bit of a blonde, uh, a little bit of a tan, and I like the green, but I want to go a little darker, and the contrast with yellow, I think, just really stands out. Uh, as you can see, they have all the old voices, and actually, in Icewind Dale 2, I think they did a much better job with the voices, even though the game itself was terrible. Um, but I, I don't really enjoy uh, much of the new ones. That's female. Let's go with... Uh, where's the old male voice? Here we go. Uh, that, that one, I think, is my favorite. Um, I don't know why, but... Uh, and I will be playing as Chesney uh, the Wizard in uh, Baldur's Gate.